Thymestown is unique. There's one main road through it, and along that main road, you can see the history dating back to 1700s, right up till the present day. The buildings that are along the main road are beautifully maintained. The facades have changed, but the old buildings are still behind. So you've got these beautiful old stone buildings. And those are just the culture and the feeling of Simonstown. Simonstown has been a naval port for more than two centuries. And the town has grown around the harbour over the years into what it is today. It's a naval culture. You hear the ship sailing, you hear the long blasts going, the hooters going, you hear the tugs calling each other. So you have that constant a feeling that there's a naval base just behind the wall. And if you go up onto the mountainside above the town, Runciman's Drive, then you look down and you can see everything happening. You can sit there for a day and just watch ships being moved around by the Harbour Master. If anybody wants any information on the history of the South African Navy in Simonstown, the best place to visit is the Simonstown Naval Museum in the Masthouse Building. Boulders Beach is about five minutes outside Simonstown, just on the way to Miller's Point. It's a great little refuge for these African penguins that live in that area. They used to be called jackass penguins because they bray like a donkey. They arrived in the early 80s, probably from across the other side of False Bay, um, and they set up home on these beautiful little sandy beaches in and amongst really big granite boulders. At the moment, there are about 2,000 penguins that are in Boulders Beach. I guess they're kind of this crazy mix of helpless land animal and flightless bird with uh, incredibly graceful and agile uh, aquatic animal. As you're driving out of Simonstown, you go past Miller's Point, so about a 30 minute drive in total from Simonstown to the Cape of Good Hope. It is the southwesternmost tip of Africa and it is this peninsula that runs down seemingly into the end of the world. It is a national park, so it is protected. It has over a thousand species of vegetation called the fainbos, along with some baboons, ostriches, and a number of antelope, not to mention birds and, and insects and reptiles uh, that are unique only to that area in the world. I do occasional walking history tours in Simonstown. I've done my master's degree on the history of slavery in Simonstown and the decision to do all of that was by meeting Patty Davidson who had been forcibly removed from Simonstown in the 1970s. They were the first family to move back to Simonstown. So she's turned the bottom half of her home into a museum and she asked me to please research the history because she felt that her community had been forgotten. And that was in 1998, so it's taken me on a long journey. I've been stopping at places where specific things happened and then I tell the story of what happened there. And so a gate that you've walked past all your life suddenly takes you back 300 years and it takes you far off the shores of, of Simonstown to other countries and then you discover who came here and what happened. History for me is important because only through understanding the pattern of history and how it comes to form who we are and we think we are just who we are because, but in actual fact, history has shaped us very strongly. When I walk around, all I see is ingredients. A lot of recipes are going through my head whenever I look around at the kind of edible landscape that we're living in. We host wild food workshops. In summertime, we do coastal foraging, where we go down to the beach to learn about how to sustainably forage intertidal ingredients. We've got a little cultivated garden as well that we collect from. And then we come back to the classroom and together as a group, we prepare and make and enjoy a seaside feast. Fire plays a huge role in Fainbos, and the two go hand in hand because the fire will trigger germination for a lot of seeds. Our entire property was surrounded by fire. But that's what it's like living out here, you know, you're at the mercy of the elements. <laughs>